a little bit of an emotional recap montage of the match. Haikyuu episode 25. Oh, he's just playing it over in his mind. Use it. Use it, Hinata. Oh, yeah. Ah! Oh. Oh, why does that hurt? That hurts the most. Daichi. And not experiencing an iron wall of his own. Oh, they're just boiling up inside. What was the outcome of the tournament, though? I really want to know. And where do they go from here? The path is really clear for a lot of the characters. Anyone below third year just takes this, gets back on their feet, and just starts training for next season. And that'll immediately make them feel better. For all the third years, I don't know. Although I've learned there's another tournament. I didn't know there were two tournaments per year. But that the third years typically don't participate. So I guess that's a decision to make. If I'm Daichi, I'm going for it. I'm going for it because you can taste it. You know, you can taste it. They're almost there. This this team was, I'm not going to say thrown together. They worked really hard. But it's new. It's fresh. They're young. And that was their first taste of like real competition that wasn't just an exhibition match. So imagine how much better they can be with, you know, a couple months at least of training. If I'm Daichi, I'm putting faith in the team and I'm going for it. I don't care. Episode 25, the third day. Okay, the tournament's not over yet. Now I'm rooting for Seijo. Now I'm rooting for Oikawa. Better win. You carry the legacy of Karasuno on your shoulders. I want to see it. <laughs> Show me some of it, at least. It's a little raw. Still fresh. We're a little sensitive about it. What? What? This is this is shocking to me. Oh no, that's too noble, Daichi. Don't do it. That's I mean it's great, it's beautiful. No! No. That's so unselfish, but no. That's so unselfish, but no. Yeah, and the team would love to da see Daichi get a, a victory, or to play again at least. <laughs> I can rattled. It's not selfish to play. A very human moment from Daichi. We think it's an interfering with your work duties. <laughs> we think you need to focus more on, you know, your job, which is teaching. And he says, go to hell. Volleyball is life. Yeah, for all the amazing things he did, for all his amazing moments, just crushing it on the court, he's going to remember his failures. That's what's going to stick out to him. That's an image right there. Drinks juice angrily. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he took one of the biggest hits in that game. This is brutal. I'm really glad that they decided to linger on this loss a little bit. Crying it out into their food wasn't the end of it. Yeah, no one knows that but him. No one else sees it. Going back to the parallels the show has with shows about heroism, I think there are two main components that Ukai Sr., Ukai the older, was touching on that's the same with heroism, that are mutually dependent on each other. You can't have one without the other and be heroic. One is the alignment, the spirit, the heart, the clarity. The other is effectiveness. You actually have to be able to do what you want to do. You have to win. Winning without the heart is great. It feels good, but is somewhat empty. Having the heart without the power doesn't really do any good towards any goal. Assuming you're directing the heroism out into something that has tangible effects rather than just, a, you know, an internal journey. That is, of course, if we're talking about the ultimate, the highest ideal. I think it's possible to be heroic without winning, but I think the people who reach the height of it manage to do both. Boy, does he have a redemption arc coming. Follow your heart, Sugawara. 
That takes a lot of heart and boldness to say that to his teacher. But he's right. Oh, is that what this is? This is a meeting about convincing Sunora not to keep playing? No, 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 no. No, he is not the guy for you. He is not the one. He's been here. He sees it. He understands. Nah. Yeah, in a weird way, they're suffering probably is doing them a lot of good. Their team might be changed too. I feel like Oika will be playing though. Yeah, they kind of self direct. Oikawa leads. Oh no. Oh no. This is an interesting choice. We're sacrificing Abu Josai to build this team for the future. I think I see where this is going. Maybe. Never know. Fight Oikawa. <laughs> Not a pulling a march comes in like a lion ray running from his problems. Back to practice. <laughs> For reasons I can't explain, I do feel like the suffering is really productive. I don't think there's any risk of them not being able to come back with full force like Okai was worried about. They're going to be more motivated. Because they tasted it. I mean, I feel like they got farther than they probably expected from the beginning. But... But... Yeah, I feel like so far this is the right approach. Like I said, he's not the guy. He's not going to be the one to tell him not to play. He's a really insightful guy. He's bigger picture thinking. He, like I think anybody watching the show, realizes that this is not really about volleyball matches for them. This is them developing into borderline heroes. I mean, this is their growth as people. This is their potential at stake. This is a better education than they'll ever get at any university. That being said, I think you lay out the risks objectively without any push. It's like, here are the list of possibilities of things. Here are the choices you have. Make the choices, make your own choices critically with open eyes and I'll support you either way. That's the adult way to handle it. That's treating them like adults, which I think they deserve at this point. And to the Aichi's concerns, there's no reason to be worried about handing it off for the sake of the first years. They got plenty of time and they're, they're great. They'll be better with the seniors probably. They'll learn more. <laughs> Remember when we were kind of enemies? That's all out the window. I mean, one season ago. Now we're just totally in unison. Same emotion, same vein. <laughs> he just jumped to the second floor. <laughs> there you go, let it out. Gonna end up breaking the ball, Asai style. This is growth. This is... We're growing. We're growing. This is what character development looks like. They can channel that feeling. They can put that into actual work. They don't forget it. Oh, what an image. On their knees. And you thought our grades were going to slip before. Right. <laughs> we don't we no longer do days off. We don't do days off around here anymore. There are no days off in volleyball. Every day is club night. This would be such a weight off of my heart if they come back. They better come back. They're coming back. Here they are. They're here. Everyone's here. Everyone, yes. We're all playing. And we're gonna win a championship this time, damn it. We got that loss out of the way. I'm so pumped for their next season just because as good as they did, that was all hard. They had a lot of rough edges in their playing, which they can now smooth out. That one game ended up being the single greatest learning experience. This is the rebuild. It's so great that everyone showed up despite there being no practice. It's time. It's time. 
俺たちはそれに劣った。One of the best things about the way they've been handling it is just their raw look at what happened. There's just no excuse making at all. There's no blame. No one blamed each other for anything. Even some really crucial mistakes. Not one ounce of bad blood. No blaming the refs, unlike me. Not even any hatred to, to Seijo. Just gut wrenching acceptance of the fact that they played a game and didn't play as well as a team that beat them, which is the best place they could possibly be because it's totally in their hands in that sense. They've like maximized their own responsibility in their playing to the highest extent possible, which means the path forward is actionable. Like, I think maybe it seems simple to watch, but that kind of thing is rare. That's super rare. That's a real high level of emotional maturity, I think. And from all of them, no less. <laughs> Wow, a loss and then a loss in another close game. Oh no, but it was in two, two rounds. Oh man, poor Oikawa. When you find out the team that destroyed you, which is the mid boss. I'm going to go to the challenge. I'm pumped. What a legend. For the 8,000th time watching the show, I feel regretful I didn't do more sports in high school. What a difference one practice session made on their psyches. But that feels right to me. Just taking the smallest step feels good. Oh, it's raining again. At least this time, not on our food. Oh, bringing it full circle. <laughs> Classic. What a powerful ending to the season. I'm guessing this is going to be a little bit of a recap. But well earned, because such a such a crazy season. So much has happened. I mean, in all honesty, just in terms of how satisfying it was to watch and how much the characters grew and where I feel like they reached. Of course, I want to see them win. I want to keep watching and watch them secure a, a championship. Nevertheless, I think it works as a, a full story. Like, if this was one, a one-season show, it would still be beautiful. You know, I would still feel satisfied by it. I feel very satisfied by the first season. I've said it a bunch, but I'm intrigued and excited, pumped to see where we go from here. Because this is just the beginning. My God. <laughs> Yeah. It's, just, it's interesting. I feel like this is one of the most potent end of season flashbacks I've seen because it's so earned. Like the amount of growth they've done is real. I think you don't even realize it. Thinking back to the beginning. Oh, that's a really adorable picture. Thank you for your support. Thank you! <laughs> IQ season one. <laughs> so that was season one. I mean, you could probably guess or I've already said a lot of how I feel about it. But to summarize a little bit, I think what's especially impressive about this season is that it was a real challenge to do this season well, just because there's just so much they had to do. It's a huge cast of characters. You have to get them all together. You have to get the team together. You have to create the stakes. You have to not only introduce them individually, but introduce their interdynamics. So I think in that sense, very naturally, the show gets better and better as the season progresses because you're building it piece by piece. And really, it's all the pieces together that make the show so phenomenal, in my opinion. But it managed to do that in a way that was really satisfying. One thing I repeatedly said in this first season was how impressed I am that things that I think other shows would really drag and stretch out, you know, the personal dramas, the pettiness, the characters go through their arcs, but they do it at a rate that is really refreshing because it's like, okay, here's a problem. Here's the insight. The characters grow and you get the growth with them, which also shows confidence in the overall trajectory and its vision. Without that confidence, without a greater story to tell, that tension might be what they try to make the show run on, but this is not that show. The show runs on greatness and great characters and great people. So they are able to transcend to a large degree their personal demons, their eccentricities, while remaining distinct characters in a way that creates this very powerful ensemble that also feels real. I mean, the characters are so lifelike that you feel like, or I feel like I'm on the team with them. You know, I, I think I repeatedly referred to this team like I think a lot of people refer to actual sports teams when talking about their wins and losses. Like, we won, we lost. This is a fictional show, right? <laughs> and the outcomes decided. The, the season one is how many years old? Seven years old or something like that. But for me, it's happening live. It's real, which is pretty phenomenal. And throughout it all, it repeatedly strikes that resonant spot. It's like, yes, that's right. That's what it means to be a good person. That's what it means to reach your potential. And then, you know, with the benefit of having seen the full season now and the last two episodes, I think the loss was the perfect choice. Definitely would have loved to see them win, but to watch them grapple with that loss, despite all the their greatness and despite how hard they work and despite how much it means to them, gave it this extra quality of just realness and a whole different dimension that they otherwise wouldn't have dealt with. You know, if they won, they probably wouldn't have learned as much. This was the best facilitator, in my opinion, of the growth that is emblematic of the show. And like life, 
thankfully, your perspective on how much something means and the value it has will change depending on how tightly or loosely you, you focus the lens. So for the, the purpose of this specific tournament, it was rough. Right, it's devastating. From a zoomed out perspective, it's perfect. It's great because we have the spring tournament. And really, we can go even farther out and say we have our whole lives. So the loss, when handled well, when handled in the correct way, which they absolutely did, given the humble and insightful way they approached it, is the highest step they could have taken. And from a story perspective, enhances the, the stakes and my desire to see them get a victory in season two, which I, I think is going to happen. My predictions for the show going forward and things I, I think I'll see, I think the seniors decision pays off. I think they win the spring tournament. Suki's going to have a development arc. Yamaguchi, I think his name is is gonna make a, a comeback in a really big way none of them will be able to talk to girls still except for maybe daichi and perhaps kageyama gets recognized as best player another thing the show does really well is the outcomes of things feel like they're well supported by what we see from the characters so they're amazing you know they're great there's a lot of talent on the team it was pretty well established that they're new they're a young team they have a lot of rough patches they push that to its limits through grit and heart it makes sense why they lost because the farther you go into a, a tournament the closer you get to the finals the more you find teams who also have that heart but likely you find people who also have the talent and i think while they have the base talent they haven't pushed that talent to its limits through work and through experience therefore i think it's reasonable to expect going forward with this new drive and with the practice they're inevitably inevitably going to be putting in seven days a week they're going to rise to the level they were at in this tournament and way beyond which means they might have a chance of catching up to this this greatest team that unfortunately annihilated our josai and i think actually that's the biggest clue that they go on to face that team in the finals because otherwise there, there was something to capture there was something to gain from an emotional standpoint by having Josai win but they didn't I think the purpose of that will be setting up this new team as a greater rival and I'm sure they're going to try to make me love them but that's not going to happen at least not until we win overall really amazing for season thank you to everybody for following and yeah we'll just jump right into season two immediately mm -hmm.